Uh, good evening to you all. I welcome you uh, once again to our virtual classes. Uh, today we are going to look at the history behind the name Ghana, which is supposed to be the first topic in SHS 2. We will specifically look at the origin of the name Ghana, where the name Ghana um, came from, and then we will also look at the sources of Ghanaian history, where we can obtain information about the Ghanaian history. And this is going to be our lessons for today. So let's look at our lesson objectives for today. Our lesson objectives for today would be that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the reasons why the Gold Coast was named Ghana, why Gold Coast was named Ghana, and also be able to identify the sources used in writing the history of Ghana. So let's look at the origin of the name Ghana, where the name Ghana came from. We are already aware that the name of present-day Ghana was called the Gold Coast and the Gold Coast remained the name of the country until independence when the Gold Coast gained its independence in 1957. So after independence, uh, there was a situation whereby the, uh, the leaders at that time decided that the name Gold Coast was just a mere description. And this was said in a speech by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on the 12th of November 1957, where he said that, and I quote, the name Gold Coast is intentionally regarded not as a name, but a description. The Gold Coast was given to, or I mean, our land was named Gold Coast because of the abundance of gold that the British saw on the shores of Ghana and so on the shores of, 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 of the land that our people lived in. And therefore, they christened the, 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 the place Gold Coast. They even had areas that they called, of course, Pepe Coast, as well as the, I mean, Slave Coast. All these were areas, of course, given by the Europeans to describe what they found in that particular area. So we can even say, uh, I mean, that of Ivory Coast, Ivory, because they found a lot of ivory in that area. So Nkrumah thought that the name was a mere description, and, and therefore uh, every, each European country may say it in its own language. And so if a Frenchman wants to say a Gold Coast, I hope you should know that he will not say, I mean, Gold Coast, but he will say it in, the, in, in French. You understand? If the Portuguese man, of course, wants to say Gold Coast, he will say it in his own language. And therefore, there was a need for them to get a name for the new found independent nation, Gold Coast. So J.B. Dankwa then proposed a name. And according to J.B. Dankwa, he said that we should call the uh, new independent country Akan Land uh, and also Akan and Ga Land. Initially, he said Akan Land but it was rejected on the basis that, you know, it only referred to the Akan. And also, he then came back to say, then let's say Akan and Galan. So we call the name, of course, the new name, or we change the purpose to Akan and Galan. These two names were both rejected on the same grounds that uh, they were being tribalistic. Well, the reason why J.B. Dankwa might have given up this name is because of the fact that the Akans were the, uh, the majority in terms of the ethnic groups you know, that lived and even lived today in Ghana. And so probably he thought that then it should be the Akan land. 
Some may also say that because he himself was an Akan, so he was only being tribalistic. So after, I mean, various consultation, the leaders then adopted the name Ghana to replace the Gold Coast. And the question will be that, uh, where did they get the name Ghana from? I mean, where did the name Ghana come from? A lot of people have this funny idea that uh, they say Ghana means God has appointed Groma, blah, 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 kind of thing. But that is not so. Uh, why the name Ghana and where did even the name Ghana come from? Now, Ghana was uh, is a Mandi language, so the name Ghana is actually a Mandi language. Uh, people who live somewhere around Mali, Senegal, uh, I mean, Mali area, there, the Mandi people. It's a Mandi language, and, and Ghana means war chief. Okay? Ghana means war chief. So the name Ghana is, is, is a language for a group of people called the Mandi, and they mean war chief if they say Ghana. And uh, it was taken from the ancient Western Sudanese Empire called Ghana, which rose and fell between AD 500 and AD 1250. So there was this, I mean, country, this powerful empire that emerged in ancient, of course, Western Sudanese. And I'll show you the map indicating the area where this great empire was located in the in our next i mean slide and um because the this empire ghana was very very powerful and was rich in gold and other things uh the i mean gold coast leaders at that time thought that we can immortalize this great empire called ghana at, at that time of course ghana rose and fell between AD 500 and 1250. So the, the, the Empire Ghana had declined and the name Ghana was somehow fading out. And so in order to immortalize or to bring back that empire, they decided to, of course, name the country or the Gold Coast Ghana. And according to al Bakri, who was a renowned historian, he says that Ghana was given a title, you know, that was born by the kings of the Ghana Empire. And so like Taito or Santihime, that kind of thing. So Ghana was uh, Taito even to the kings in that empire. So let's look at the map that showed where that ancient Ghana or that ancient empire was located. So you look at the map over there, on your right hand side, you see, I mean, Ghana over there. So Ghana over here, as you can see. I mean, Ghana over this area. So this is the ember that we are talking about. But they had their capital town over here called uh, Amikumbi Sale. And so this was where that Asian Ghana was located. And then it declined. And so the forefathers decided to name the Gold Coast after this one's great empire. It was not the only empire that emerged in the, in the Western Sudanese area. They had Mali. They had Songhai, they had Kanembuno, as you have seen on the map. So now let's then look at why the leaders of Ghana decided to name the empire Ghana, or the reasons for the name, I mean, Gold Coast. Why did they decide to choose the name Gold Coast, even though I have already established that this empire was so much powerful that they wanted to immortalize the name. Now, the specific reasons were that one, there were existence of gold in ancient Ghana. Ancient Ghana was very rich. That empire you see on your map in that yellow strip was very rich in gold. And Ghana, I mean, the Gold Coast was also very rich in gold. Ancient Ghana, again, too, was, you know, had warlike chiefs. Their chiefs were very, very fearsome. They embarked on several wars of expansion. The same way that 
the Gold Coast also had some, I mean, fearful kings who actually engaged in a number of battles with the uh, British. Again, ancient Ghana was the first empire to emerge in the Western Sudan. So if you look on the map on the right hand side, you see other empires, Songhai, Mali, uh, Kanembono, and the others. Ancient Ghana was the first to emerge in, in, in that area, in the Western Sudanese area. When we look at Sub-Saharan Africa, the Gold Coast was also, or became the first um, country to also gain independence. So you realize that with these regions, there was some sort of similarity. We shared common uh, features. And so our forefathers thought it wise to uh, name our, our country, our Gold Coast, uh, or the Gold Coast to Ghana. So I believe that with this short lesson, you would, you, at least you have an idea about why and or the origin of the name Ghana and why Ghana or the Gold Coast was given the name Ghana. Now let's move on to our next subtopic where we look at the, uh, the sources that you, you, I mean sources for Ghanaian history. So the sources of Ghanaian history are basically the uh, areas where you can get, or the sources where you can get information about the writing of Ghanaian history. And these, I mean, sources have been divided into two. We have the documentary sources and the non, and the non-documentary sources. We can also call the documentary sources as written sources, and the non-documentary sources as what are written sources. The example of such of the documentary sources were Arabic accounts. Uh, the Muslims or Arabs who came around, you know, uh, documented what they saw. Also diaries of some important people, uh, records of European traders and missionaries and works written by Ghanaians were all, are all written as uh, sources where you can get information to study the history of Ghana. Again, you can also study the history of Ghana through oral tradition, archaeology, drum language, ethnography, and ethnomusicology. All these are areas where uh, you can be able to study the history of the country. I, uh, I thank you very much, and I know that you have learned something great uh, in this lesson. If you have any uh, question, you can um, I mean, WhatsApp or call me. My number is 54 Zero four seven. Subscribe and let's meet some other time. Try your hands on this work.